Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Today, on the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing, I'm going to be talking to you about the moon in Norse myth. I've mentioned now and then on this channel that the moon is actually not a big part of Norse mythology nor any of the celestial bodies. Norse myth is surprisingly, um, at least what we have preserved of it, is surprisingly sort of indifferent to uh, the heavenly bodies. But, of course, naturally, these things do get mentioned sometimes. One of the most influential quotations about the moon that we have in the poetic Edda, the main source of uh, the myths of the Norse gods, such as Odin, Thor, and Loki, is from the poem Vavthrudnismol, where Odin asks the giant, or Jotun, Vavthrudnir, whose name means something like riddle weaver, about the origins of various things, and he asks in Sansa 22, this. Seg thu that annat, if thit u di dugir, och thu vavthrud nir vittir, hwad an moni um kom, swat fer men ivir, ed a soul it sama. Vavthrud nir replies in Sansa 23, Mundil furri hatir, ha ner mona fadir, och swa solar it sama, himin huerva. So Odin asks him, tell me second if your mind avails, if your mind knows it, and you, Vathrutnir, know where the moon comes from, the one that goes over men, or the sun, the same. Vathrutnir replies, Mundilfuri, he is called, he is the father of the moon and also of the sun. They travel, they circle heaven, the sky. They shall travel it every day for men to tell the years. Now, who exactly Mundilfuri is is a little bit um, mystifying. His name actually looks like it would be a name of the moon since it means something like um, moment in time traveler. So something appointed to tell the time. Um, but this name is only mentioned here in Vafthuth Nismal and in the prose edda by Snorri, which heavily borrows from these poems in the poetic edda. We also hear about an early time before the moon in Voluspa, in the Codex Regius manuscript version, stanza five, we read, Sol varp sunnan sinni mona hendi inni högri um himin jo dyr. Sol that ne visi var hon salli oti stjörnur that ne visu the sun shone from the south, companion of the moon, its right hand over the heaven horses, probably the horses that pull the sun's chariot. The sun did not know where she had her halls, her place. The stars did not know where they had their places. The moon did not know what kind of power he had. So here, the sun and the moon are vaguely personified, but for the most part uh, in Norse myth, they are not discussed as beings that have personalities or knowledge. Another very interesting passage in the poetic Edda that mentions the moon is Hovmal stands at 137. This is at the end of the part of Hovmal called Lodfavnismal. And in this stanza, after the typical uh, four lines that open all the stanzas in Lodfavnismal, which I'm not going to repeat to you here, we get uh, certain remedies for things which include a uh, somewhat enigmatic reference to the moon. Here's that stanza. Hors thu ol drekr, kios thu ther yardar megin, thvi at jord tekr vid oldri, en elder vid sotum, ek vid abindi, ax vid fjolkengi, hol vid hyrogi, heftum skal mona kvedja, beti vid bit sotum, en vid bolvi runar, fold skal vid flodi, taka. Where you drink ale, choose the might of the earth for yourself because the earth receives ale 
and fire against sickness, oak against an irritable bowel, wheat against magic, elder tree against family quarrels. I'm going to skip this parenthetical line. I'm, I'm putting it in parentheses. There's not very many punctuation marks in the, in the manuscript. Maggots or worms against venomous bites and runes against evil or distress. The earth shall take or receive a flood, perhaps a veil against flood. But this line about the moon is really curious. Heftum skalmona kvedia. It's difficult to tell uh, what this is doing in circuit here because it doesn't have the parallel structure of the other lines in this stanza about remedies. Skal means shall, must, and it's often used in Hovamal and sometimes other poems without a subject, so one shall. Kvedia means something like summon, summon the moon, mona, heftum. Hates. Now, heftum is in the dative plural, and it's difficult to say if this is instrumental, like summon the moon with your hates. Is it oppositional? Is it summon the moon against your hates, like call the moon as a witness against your hates? Or is the moon to be summoned against hates as a remedy for hates? It's really difficult to say because it's so terse and doesn't follow the formula of the other terse lines here. Now, I've typically understood it as a summoning of the moon to witness hate somehow, but it could also very legitimately be interpreted as a remedy against hate. Still, what uh, belief, what tale might lie behind that line is uh, completely mysterious to us today. It's not hinted at anywhere else in the Old Norse corpus. Now, as usual in talking about Norse mythology, the poetic edda has a lot of these hints uh, that are not explained in the text itself. But in the prose edda, Snorri Sturluson, an Icelandic chieftain in the 1200s, tries to explain some of these myths and probably makes them a little bit too cohesive. And he tells a somewhat confusing story about the sun and the moon that make them both the names of beings and of heavenly bodies that they are charged with. Let me give you uh, these passages. So mother, er nevender mundilföri, er oti tvau born. Thou voru svo fogrok fríð, ad hann kallaði son sin mona, en dóttur sin a sól, og gifti hann a þeim manni er glennar het. En golden reidusk þessu ofdrambi, og tóku þau sistkin og settu upp og himin. Móni styrir gongu tungs og græður nýjum og knýðum. Hann tók tvau born, Av jordani er svo heita bil og hjúki, er þau gengu frá brunni þeim, er burgir heitir, og boru o oxlum ser svo er heitir sögur en stongin simul. Víðfinnur er nefendur fader þeirra. Þessi born fylgja mona svo sem sjá má af jordu. A man is named Mundilfuri, so there's his name again, so he's probably getting it from Vafsrutnis Ma from that quote that I uh, quoted at the very beginning of this video. They were so beautiful and beautiful, Old Norse likes to double those, that he called his son Moon and his daughter Sun. Now this seems to be that he is naming them after the heavenly bodies, right? They're so beautiful that they shine like these things in the heavens. And she, he married her to the man named Glenn, probably meaning something like cloud opening. But the gods were angry at this arrogance, probably naming his children after heavenly bodies and took those siblings and put them up in the heavens. They talk about what happens to the sun, but then the moon, moon, the guy named Moon, Moni, steers the movement of Tungul, another word for moon, and rules the waxing and waning. He took two children from the earth who were named Bill and Huki, names that probably uh, somehow relate to the phases of the moon, when they went from the well, which is called Birgir, and they had on their shoulders something called Sug, and it was on a carrying pole called Simul, right? There's all these random names, and who knows where exactly Snorri got them or what the meaning of the story is. Vithfin is the name of their father. These children follow the moon as may be seen from the earth. What is he talking about, right? What are the two things that follow the moon? Uh, I've looked at the moon quite a bit in my day, and I don't see two things that follow it. So there's something something messed up in the tr transition between Snorri's source and Snorri and or between Snorri and us here. 
But he also talks about the end of the moon and the sun. That eru tver ulvar, og hetir sa er efter henni fer skol. Han hredes kon, og han mun taka hana. En sa hetir hati hrodvidnes son, er hurer henni hlöper, og vill han taka tunglet, og svo mun verda. Gjöger ein byr fyr austan midgarth i theim skogi, er jorn vidr hetir. I theim skogi, Bigia ther troll conner er jorn vid your heta. In gamle guger futher at son marga jotna och alla i varks likium, och thadana veru comnir thesir ulvar. Och svoer sagt at av etni verder so enna motkaster er kallader er monagarmer. Han fyllisk med fjorvi, allra thera mana er doya, och han glöper tungul, en stökfer blow the himmin och loft all. Thad an tyn er sol skinni sinu, och vindar eru thå åkurir och gnia hedan och handan. There are two wolves, and the one that goes after the sun is named Skull. She is afraid of him. The sun is feminine and the moon is masculine in Old Norse, by the way. The reverse of the Romance languages. Uh, so she's afraid of him, and he will take her. And that one is named Hati, hate, son of Hruthvitnir, famous monster, presumably son of Fenrir, who can be called Hruthvitnir, famous monster, who goes before her, before the sun, and he will take the moon, and it will happen. There is a certain Jotun, giant woman, who lives east of Midgard, the middle enclosure of the realm where humans live, in a forest called Jornvither, Ironwood. In that forest live the troll women, who are called the Jorn Fithir, the Iron Giantesses. The old giantess has sons. They are many giants, and all of them in a wolf's likeness. And from them, all of these wolves come. And it is said that from that family, one is the mightiest, and he is called the Molnagarmer. That's literally like a moon dog. He is filled with the life of all the men who die, and he swallows the moon, and he splatters with blood, heaven and all the air. And in that way, the sun loses its shine, and the winds are all wild, and they turn turbulently hither and yon. So we have interesting little hints here and there about uh, what might have once been a deeper mythology about the moon, but it's striking how little it really does come up in the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. How conflicting the sources are, which suggests that there wasn't one uh, overarching narrative that held all throughout Scandinavia, all throughout the Viking Age. Rather, probably lots of different people and times and generations had different ideas about the moon and other heavenly bodies and uh, came up with different stories about them and about their ends and about their beginnings and whether they were personal beings or not. As with so many things in Norse mythology, we have uh, just just drips. We don't have uh, the old sea that is completely dried up, and so we have to just kind of guess at what the different bays and inlets and, and rivers flowing out of that sea might have once looked like. I hope this video has been interesting or informative for you. I hope that if you enjoy Norse mythology that you'll check out the 300-something videos I think I have on this channel now about that subject. I'm also a translator. I've translated the Poetic Edda, uh, which I've been uh, reading from an old Norse here. I've also translated uh, the Saga of the Volsungs with the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, two of the great old Viking sagas. In fall 2019, my Wanderer's Hovamal, a volume containing not just my translation of Hovamal, but also my old Norse text of it, um, thoroughly, thoroughly reviewed by me, thoroughly commented upon with notes and some other extra translations and such. That will be published by Hackett Publishing, the same publisher as my first two books, and eventually, also, I will translate the prose edit, but that's going to come after uh, the next two books, The Wanderers Hall of Mall, and another book of sagas. Well, for now, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best. <laughs>